Hello, welcome to today's lesson. Today we're talking about 5.5, which is ordering and comparing fractions. In our last lesson we learned about equivalent fractions and what a fraction is and uh, how to simplify a fraction. Well today we're going to be taking especially the equivalent fractions piece and uh, taking it to uh, another level, taking it another step so that we can order and compare our fractions. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So one thing we need to remember, when uh, the numerators are the same, remember a numerator is the top number in a fraction, so when the top number is the same, it's the bottom number that's going to instantly tell us which one is the bigger or the smaller fraction. So in this case, we've got this pizza is uh, split into fourths, and so we're going to talk about one-fourth here, and over here, this pizza would be split into six pieces already. So if we're going to compare one-fourth and one-sixth, so our numerator is the same. We have a 1 and a 1. It's the bottom number we're looking at. And here's where we need to remember that the smaller the denominator, the bigger the actual slice is. You're cutting it the same size thing into a, a bigger piece, less slices. So that means bigger pieces. Fewer pieces, but bigger pieces. Over here, when we have 1 6, you can see that um, this, whoops, my pen would just went a little crazy there. Let's get rid of that. Um, when uh, we look over here at 1 6, it's a smaller piece. So when our top number is the same, all we need to do is look at the bottom number and know that the, the smaller the bottom number, the bigger the piece. So we have a, the 4 is smaller than the 6, but you can see you get a much bigger slice if this was pizza. So make sure you get this in your notes. When the numerators are the same, the smaller bottom number is actually the bigger fraction. All right, so what happens when our denominator is the same? We've got different numerators, our top numbers are different, but our bottom number is the same. When that's the case, we just need to order the top numbers. So if I wanted to order these six fractions from smallest to biggest, I would look, what's my smallest top number? 1 12th is the smallest top number. Uh, so I use this one. What's my next one? 2 twelfths. Then my next one is 3 twelfths. I've used these. After that, I jump to a 5 twelfths. Whoops. And then a 7 twelfths. And the biggest one is a 9 twelfths. So as long as the bottom numbers are the same, we just need to order or compare the top numbers. I'm going to make my lines a little smaller here. So let's keep moving on. When fractions have different denominators, all right, so now we've got completely different numbers here. Um, it's kind of like comparing dogs and cupcakes. They're just different. You can't really compare them. What you have to do is get them similar. You have to get them the same uh, denominator and then you can just compare the top numbers. So you want to have a different or a common denominator. So let's go ahead and look. To find a common denominator, so these are our steps for comparing and ordering fractions. You're going to want to write this down. To find a common denominator, you try to find the least common denominator. That's what LCD stands for. So that's their, um, it's their least common multiple is actually what we're looking for. So what's the first number that's common between 5 and 12? It doesn't have to be the first number, but that keeps your fractions kind of small. Well, when I think of 5 and 12, the first number that comes to mind is 60. 5 times 12 is 60. So I need to set up my fractions to find uh, common denominators for them. So I'm going to set it up like we did yesterday, finding equivalent fractions. 5 times what equals 60? I had to take 5 times 12, which means I need to take my top number times 12. So 5 times 12 equaled 60. 2 times 12 is equal to 24. Uh, 12 times what? equaled 60, 12 times 5. So that means I need to take my top number times 5 as well. 5 times 5 will give me 25. So now 
I can go ahead and compare these fractions. I have 20, oh, I meant to write 24. Let's try that again. 24 sixtieths and 25 sixtieths. Which one is the bigger number? Well, I got the same bottom, so all I need to do is compare the top, and I know that it's going to be a less than sign. That 2 fifths, which is the same thing as 24 sixtieths, is less than 5 twelfths, which is the same thing as 25 sixtieths. So let's review that real quick again. We need to find a common denominator, so what number is common to both 5 and 12? And then I need to convert these numbers to that common denominator. I need to make this a 60 and this a 60. So what did I have to do to each fraction in order to get it to 60? I had to take both top and bottom times 12 on the first one to get 24 sixtieths. And then on the second fraction, I had to take top and bottom times 5 in order to get this 5 twelfths to equal 25 sixtieths. And then I can go ahead and compare. So let's make sure that we have this in our notes. You must, and notice, I made it all capital and bold. You absolutely have to have a common denominator, so the same bottom number, in order to compare fractions. Um, unless that top number is, is the same, like in our first slide, you absolutely have to have a common denominator in order to compare them. So let's try it. Let's order from least to greatest. What's the first thing I need to do? I need to find a common denominator between 3, 5, and 10. I'm going to have to convert 1 third, 2 fifths, and 3 tenths. What number is common between 3, 5, and 10? Well, let's see. Um, if I think about it, 3, 6, nope, that doesn't work, 9, 12, 15, oh, 15 and 5, oh, but 10 doesn't work there, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, ooh, 30 will work with 5 and 30 will work with 10. So I need to make sure that I convert all of these into something over 30. So these are my uh, little equations that I'm going to set up. And now I need to find those equivalent fractions. So I'm asking myself, what times 3 equals 30? What do I have to take times 3 to equal 30? I hope you said times 10. That means I've got to take my top number times 10. And that will give me 10 over 30. So 5 times what equals 30? Now I'm onto a different one, so it's not times 10 anymore. 5 times what number gives me 30? 5 times 6. So if I took my bottom number times 6, i got to take my top times 6. 2 times 6 is 12, so I have 12 thirtieths. And then now I'm on to my last one. 10 times what equals 30? 10 times 3 equals 30. So now I have to take my top number times 3 as well. Um, so what do I get when I take 3 times 3? I get 9. So now I have 9 thirtieths, 12 thirtieths, and 10 thirtieths. Which one is the smallest one? Well, the 9 thirtieths is. So I'm going to go over here. Remember, I want to. these are the fractions that I want to order. So 3 tenths is the one that works with 9 thirtieths. So 3 tenths is my smallest one. My next one, 10 is smaller than 12. So this is the fraction I want to write next, 1 third. And last but not least, this one, 2 fifths. Now I have these fractions in order from least to greatest. Good job. You're also going to have to know how to find a fraction between a pair of fractions. Well, you can't just pick any number. You have to pick one that you know is between there. So again, we're going to want to find a common denominator. We're going to take 7 tenths, and we're going to take 5 sixths, and we want to uh, get them to have the same number in between, or the, the same bottom number. So what number can we use that's going to work for both 10 and 6? Well, I'm going to go with 
60, that one was the first one that came to my mind. If you said 30, that one would work as well. Um, but this one will work just fine. So how did we get from 10 to 60? What did we multiply? We took 10 times 6 in order to get there. So I got to do the same to the top. 7 times 6 is 42. Now how did I get from 6 to 60 down here? Hopefully you said you take it times 10. Whoops. Times 10. So I got to take my top number times 10. 5 times 10 is 50. So now can I find a fraction between 42 sixtieths and 50 sixtieths? Sure, I got lots of options. I could say 43 sixtieths, 44 sixtieths, 45 sixtieths, 46 sixtieths, 47 sixtieths, 48 sixtieths, 49 sixtieths. All of those would work. So basically we want to find a common denominator and then find a number that's in between the top. So here's the one I chose, 43 sixtieths. So what I want you to do now is um, I'm going to go ahead and have you do just uh, a couple of problems. I want you to um, complete uh, this statement. Let me know, is 3 tenths, is it less than, equal to, or greater than, um, let's go with uh, 2 twelfths. And then I also want you to tell me, is 2 6 less than, equal to, or greater than uh, 2 fifths? And then I would like you to order from least to greatest. The following fractions. Tell me how they work out. Two thirds, oh, sorry, two sixths. Let me erase that. That didn't work out very well. Two sixths is what I'm talking about. Um, three fourths and one half. Those are the three I want you to order. So uh, please go ahead, make sure you get common denominators before you start comparing them. And uh, we'll check these out tomorrow in class.